I'm here today at Pulau Hantu to overcome the physical barrier which is the water surface and to dispel the myth that nothing can be seen in our waters. While Sue goes to explore the undersea world, I think I'll take a slightly drier approach. I'm staying vertical. You know, when I was a kid, I'm embarrassed to say, but I used to assume that corals were just these funny shaped rocks. Maybe you could tell us what they really are. You shouldn't be embarrassed. When I first started learning anything about corals, I used to think they were plants. But it turns out that they're actually animals. And there are some corals that are hard, like if you feel this one, it's stiff. Okay. That's because they have an exoskeleton and they extract the calcium from the water and they use it to build these structures in which they live. And they are colonies, so this is actually millions and thousands of little tiny animals living together. If you look closely, and you can see there are little dots. Okay. Each one of those dots are actually one animal. Some corals don't have these exoskeletons and we call them soft corals. So generally, there are these two main types of corals. But then, you know, I bet some people could easily be confused by all of these. I mean, how would one tell these apart? One of the easiest way uh -huh. to, to tell them is actually by touch. Okay. And this one you feel it's kind of rough. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a kind of sponge, a uh -huh. green branching sponge. Green sponge, huh? Yeah. Okay. And actually, if you look over here in this one, they have a small cluster of little animals. These are called zoanthids. Yeah, I was, I was wondering what they were. Th so that's not part of the coral? No. Nope. Okay, so, yeah. so what are they? They are also kind of small animals. Uh -huh. Each one of these are again single animals. So we have the zoanthids that are living together with this colony of coral here. Okay. And sometimes you also get worms or fish or crabs that specifically live with certain types of coral. Now, are there different kinds around here? Oh, for sure, there, yeah. are, there are heaps of... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll take a look? Sure. Okay. Okay. Debbie, this pink blobby thing. Remember just now I mentioned that there's hard coral and soft coral? Yeah, uh -huh. This blobby thing is yeah. actually soft coral. Yes. Again, if you touch it gently, mm -hmm. you know it's not as rigid and stiff as the, the hard coral because this one doesn't have an exoskeleton. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So when it's dry like this, when most of the water is low, it kind of flops over like that. But yeah. if it's submerged, it actually stands up. It looks uh, prettier. Okay. Something else that's interesting to talk about, let's look at this other kind of hard coral over here. What makes this particularly interesting for our viewers? Compared to the previous hard coral we were looking at, this one is you know, got lots of colour. Okay. Now corals actually don't have colours. The tissue is transparent. But, but they're green. Yeah, and that, that colour actually comes from a kind of microalgae that lives within the coral. Okay. The algae, like all plants, photosynthesizes during the daytime and it produces these sugars which is consumed partly by the coral. Do the coral eat their own food though? I mean, they're just mooching off the, <laughs> the algae? Or? Sort of. Why the algae lives with the coral is because the coral gives it a little house to okay. stay in, so it you know, kind of has the security of not drifting off somewhere else. Okay. And so this is one of those classic, what do you call those in biology? You know, when we're students? Symbiosis. There we go, symbiosis. That's right. <laughs> Sean, take a look at this. Looks just like some... Sausage. <laughs> it's actually squid eggs. These are... Yep. Squid eggs? Mm -hmm. Amazing, look at that. So now I know where your food comes from. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, today we saw mostly individual corals, individual sponges, but when you put it all together, it forms a coral reef. 
And coral reefs are, are very productive places. They are, hmm. provide shelter for animals such as these squid, squid okay. yeah, to lay their eggs, as well as for young fish to hide from predators so that they can grow up to something that's plate size and be someone's dinner eventually. But they're also very biologically diverse. They're a great place for research and also to study like medicines and chemicals and a lot of research is being done in that area but at the same time reefs are disappearing at a very very fast rate so it's very important that we protect them and reefs also provide the service of protecting our coast they, they give us something for free that would otherwise cost tens or hundreds of millions of dollars every year without reefs countries have to spend vast amounts of, of money to to build things like seawalls to prevent erosion and dredge and move soil and, and uh, sand during the tsunami. If right. the reef actually prevented certain areas from being severely damaged because they mm. broke the force of the wave. That's why some of them are called barrier reefs because they are a barrier between the ocean and the coast. It's amazing. What a day. Thanks to you, I've seen so much today. I bet you. Sue didn't see as much. I, mean, I know Sue didn't see as much. Or, or if she did, then her mask got like all foggy and she couldn't see anything. You know? Or the fish went away, you know, I'm sure. Incredible. Thanks, thanks Debbie. You're welcome. Despite the sand and silts in our waters, we do have a thriving coral community. So the myth that we cannot see anything underwater here is dispelled. 